so hello guys and welcome back once again so today we will again have another question on maths plurals and guys this question is something that i have to teach with a very small theory which i guess will be important for your je advanced although it is not specifically mentioned in various books but maybe this can help you okay like the question you right now see on screen can be done using various methods but i prefer that you remember what i am going to teach you today because this will be of real use okay so if you notice the question says fx be a continuous function from 0 to 1 to all real positive such that integral 0 to 1 f squared x dx is equal to 1 and i is equal to integral 0 to 1 x power 2 0 2 4 f of x dx so if the maximum value of i equals 1 by root n then the value of n so actually for this before starting off i will teach you something anyways guys if you want you may try out the question once maybe i will wait for a few seconds and then solve it okay guys so i hope it's time for us to solve so before solving this i would like to teach you something which is a very famous you can say integral inequality that is called cauchy squares inequality i'm sorry if the pronunciation is wrong i am very bad at pronouncing things maybe my pronunciation might be wrong it's cauchy squares or something like that so this inequality tells that if f of x like it's a really small inequality okay so and the, there is no condition also only condition is f of x and g of x will two functions will be involved they have to be continuous in the interval in which we are trying to use this inequality okay that's the only condition they have to be continuous in that okay so you can remember this easily not a uh, very much type of pressure on your mind i hope so if f of x comma g of x they are okay not belong to continuous rather r continuous in the interval closed a to b then the following inequality will be valid and this inequality is integral b to a f of x into g of x dx squared less than or equal to integral a to b f squared x dx or you can write it as f of x whole square dx also if you want and this will be integral a to b g square x dx okay gx whole square or g square x dx whatever you want you may write so i will quickly enclose this in a red colored box so this is the inequality that actually we will directly use and this sum will be solved within a few seconds okay but anyways because i have told you something so i should also prove it so i will try to show you the most there are very very many complicated proofs available for this inequality but i am not going into those i will show you the most like simplest form that is maybe within the range of your jee syllabus okay so the proof of this thing will actually is a method that is called completing the square i hope you have heard it before also so proof integral a to b like if i write f of x i will take f of x and g g of x only f of x minus lambda times g of x whole square okay now this thing is something that if i integrate will always be greater than equal to 0 right no doubts like this form is actually the one that is generally taken to prove this okay like if you you may ask me reasons why so only reason that i can give you is f of x minus g of x because in the inequality their places are swapped and no negative sign is there that's the only reason i can give this is as like this is a sort of standard method and also one more thing here lambda is a constant which belongs to any real number so guys if we like expand this this is integral a to b f squared x dx plus 
लैमडा स्क्वेयर टाइम्स इंटीग्रल ए टू बी जी स्क्वेयर एक्स डी एक्स माइनस टू टाइम्स इंटीग्रल ए टू बी लैमडा आउटसाइड एफ ऑफ एक्स जी ऑफ एक्स डी एक्स एंड दिस थिंग इज ग्रेटर दैन और इक्वल टू जीरो सो इफ वी नाउ like i will do a little bit of substitution here if we take this thing to be capital a your this thing to be capital c the entire integral okay and this particular thing the integral part to be capital b then actually if we write this this will be a quadratic equation that is c lambda square minus of your 2b lambda i'm sorry plus a greater than equal to zero now because lambda is real and also like lambda is real first thing so the roots of this equation will be absolutely real and also quadratic has to be non negative right so for that the discriminant actually has to be like this thing and the quadratic has to be non negative so to uh, like suffice these two conditions your discriminant here has to be less than equal to zero okay because lambda is the first thing real and for like lambda is real but for the quadra uh, okay wait this will be better to say for a quadra for this quadratic to be non negative for all real lambda yeah that is better for this quadratic to be non negative for all real lambda your discriminant has to be less than equal to 0 which means 4b square has to be less than or equal to 4ac i hope you have understood this part okay i will repeat once again for this quadratic to be non negative for all real values of lambda for like we are not going into the roots maybe i said roots but just ignore that okay we are going into the sign of this quadratic expression because it is greater than equal to 0 to keep it greater than equal to 0 for all real lambda we have to make the discriminant less than equal to 0 okay i hope it's clear so simplifying this very easily b square will be less than or equal to ac so like it's done absolutely i am not writing it again just put the values we found and you will automatically get your inequality right away okay so like this is sort of a very easy proof you can say okay and like one more thing can also fascinate you that what will happen if equality holds so if equality holds very simply f of x will be equal to lambda times g of x that is a unique case and we have like we have to include that in our inequality okay this is for the equality and it is a unique case like not overall we need to check the overall cases right So guys I hope you have understood this so now let's go on into solving okay so if we apply our quachi's like not I'm sorry not quachi quachi squads inequality here so this will actually become i is equal to i guess i was your integral 0 to 1 x bar 2024 times f of x so you can see two different functions one is x bar 2024 another is f of x so applying the inequality this will be less than equal to integral 0 to 1 x bar whole square so 4048 dx and this will be integral 0 to 1 and i guess f square x dx okay okay and also there was a whole square on this left hand side so what i will do is i will just bring them to power halves into the each bracket okay so integral 0 to 1 f square x is absolutely equal to 1 and power half also would make it 1 so integral 0 to 1 x power 2 024 f of x is less than or equal to i guess this would come out to be 0 to 1 right so 1 by root 4049 Okay, so sum is done. Maximum value of i, so it was equal to root under one by root under n. So n is four zero four nine. I hope the value of n was asked. Yes. This will be the final answer for n equals to four zero four nine. Will be the final answer to this question.
okay so like our answer has arrived but guys i wanted to tell you one thing that i guess i can tell like see this thing is not very much inside your je syllabus so if you don't want to quite know this then you can like absolutely ignore it and end the video right away but this is something that will help you connect in between integration and vectors okay so actually this is bit of your going bit of outside your syllabus but you can i guess understand okay so what happens is in our vectors in space okay it's actually in higher mathematics it is called hilbert space so in hilbert space you can actually define dot products i hope you remember what dot products are so there you can actually define dot products like this just see the definition i will not maybe solve this because this will go much outside your syllabus but i will give you a small idea this is actually defined as integral 0 to 1 f of x g of x dx okay just know this that uh, like in integrals in higher level mathematics we can define this is actually dot product okay this is a way of writing dot product it's dot product only you can write f dot g also if you want it's a way of writing dot product in higher mathematics so like actually there is a very famous inequality that all of you will know not inequality actually we can easily prove it if you see u dot v if u and v are two vectors we say it is equal to modulus of mod u into mod v into cos theta right and also the modulus would end here so actually from here we can say u dot v is less than or equal to modulus of modulus u into v right this we can easily express so actually using this you can find out the same answer okay just i will give you a small hint what you will do is find out the length of f vector and g vector which will actually be nothing but maybe i can show one modulus f if we want to find like we are treating f and g here as vectors okay this is a single line i'm sorry so actually this will be root under integral 0 to 1 f squared x dx and if you find this actually this would come out to be equal to 1 okay and if you find your modulus of like modulus of modulus g because the answer might come out to be negative so like that this will actually come out to be root under integral 0 to 1 x power 4048 dx so actually if you see it's coming out to be the same thing right 1 by root 4049 okay like you just consider this that we are finding out the modulus of two vectors f and g there is whole lot of stuff actually regarding this this is a very important topic in higher mathematics okay this is actually there this length of a function treated as a vector it is called norm okay norm n o r m it's called a norm what we say as a length of vector here there it is called a norm okay A anyways just don't go into all this this is not your cup of tea so if you actually after that if you actually apply this inequality in this case the inequality be will be f dot g if you want you can put the vector sign but when we deal with functions we don't put vector signs okay what we do is like if you want to know the representation of this we don't actually write when we treat functions as vectors we don't write f dot g we write this for vectors only when we are treating functions as vectors we write them in this format f comma g this is the same thing as dot product okay like if f and g are two functions their dot product is represented like this just like two vectors their dot product is represented like this two functions when they are treated as vectors their dot product is represented like this okay so if we take the modulus of this thing like here the modulus doesn't have anything to do with this magnitude okay it is just for the sign so this thing will be less than or equal to your modulus of modulus f into modulus g so after that if you put you will directly get i is less than equal to 1 by root 4049 this is something that you might think of but maybe like just consider this as something extra i gave you okay don't 
deep dive into all of this because this will only waste your time like if you want to think like this some brainstorming then bus okay only up till this don't like too much boggle your minds because unnecessary stuff will only clog your brains okay this much only you can know this is type of representation of functions in vectors okay anyways so guys i hope this will be the end for today's video and i hope you have liked the video if you have liked my channel do like share and subscribe anything any comments anything else do come out in the comment section and guys also do join my telegram discussion chat because i am trying to upload lot of stuff there okay so anyways i hope that will be the end for this video today thanks for watching